There are no strings on me. That felt like the most awkward opening I've ever done. Hello everyone! <laughs> I'm doing an Avengers Age of Ultron review and I apologize for this not being up sooner. I just got my new camera and so this is going to be a much more laid back type of review because I'm still kind of figuring out the kinks and stuff so I'm sorry if something goes wrong. <laughs> but anyway, Avengers Age of Ultron is the second Avengers movie in the Marvel movie lineup and this time the Avengers have to go up against Ultron who is an artificial intelligence created by Tony Stark and the Avengers have to stop him from like destroying the earth or something like that. <laughs> Anywho, so I think a lot of misconceptions people had when people started seeing the trailers was that this is going to be a much more darker film than the first movie and it really isn't. It's just as comedic. It might be a little dark in some of its tones but ultimately it still has the same feel as the first movie and ultimately I think that in some ways it's just like the first movie, so that can kind of be a negative aspect of it, but it can also be a positive because you go in expecting this and you get what you expected. Uh, on the other hand, where I have some of the gripes about this movie is that the comedy, I just feel like it was too much comedy and too much one-liners and too much jokes put into the script. And I felt like they should have you know, ease back a little bit. They can still be funny, but ease back a little bit on the comedy. It just felt like the movie was just one whole, like, one-liner after one-liner after one-liner, and all of them were funny, but for some of the material that's in the movie that's a little dark, it just didn't, you know, mesh as well, and I think it's too reminiscent of the first film, and I think this one needed to go in a different direction and I think from the trailers it should have probably been as dark as the trailers were omitting that type of tone. I think that Joss Whedon does a great job of having all of the characters interact so well with each other and I really like the new additions like Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch and Ultron himself. Uh, however, I do feel like the script was rushed with the story as well as the pacing was off and that might just be from the way it's edited because I found out that the original movie was like four hours, three hours long and they had to immensely cut down the length of the time. So I'm really curious to see like when the Blu-ray comes for this movie if they have an extended cut of Avengers if the pacing is any better or, you know, it doesn't make that much of a difference. But from what I can see right now, it didn't feel natural the way that the story progressed. And I think I would have liked if Ultron was maybe developed a little more before he became, you know, a villain. It was very... almost like 30 minutes went by and then, you know, oh, I want to get rid of the Avengers and stuff like that. So uh, I, I think that... In order for maybe the audience to connect more with, maybe not connect more, but just like feel a little bit more about uh, Ultron, I feel like it should have taken more time to a little bit more slowly uh, progress his character, if that makes any sense. Uh, but speaking of Ultron, I really liked James Spader's voice. He did an amazing job. And actually, one preconception again that people had was that he was going to be very menacing. And I think that he can be threatening, but I didn't think he was enough threatening in the movie. But I'll get back to that in a sec. Uh, but he's actually pretty funny. Um, he has a lot of funny lines. Um, like, there's one where he said, if I can throw up in my mouth right now, you know, I would. That was pretty hilarious. And uh, I don't want to give away too much, of course, in case you haven't seen it yet. But I really liked his type of, like, attitude. Since Tony Stark, you know, was heavily responsible in the way he was created, he kind of emits a lot of his mannerisms and his personality. Now, back to the point where I was saying that he wasn't that threatening. Well, I would say... Physically, I think that he was very threatening, but he never felt like a threat to the Avengers because uh, throughout the movie, 
he kind of is, like, defeated easily. Like, just one of the memories can defeat him, and it just kind of lost the cool factor a little bit with him. So I would have liked it if he was a more difficult opponent. You have to kind of make the villain shine, um, in that, like, they think that they've almost won, and I felt like this movie lacked that. Uh, but again, I really liked his character, and I hope that he comes back in a future Marvel movie, because I think he definitely was one of the more memorable villains in the Marvel movie lineup, which they're definitely lacking right now. I think Ultron and Loki both are probably the strongest villains so far. Now, one thing I really liked character-wise was Hawkeye. Uh, he was a lot more developed here than he was in the first movie, and if you don't, I don't want to spoil too much in the first movie if you haven't still seen it, which, like, why? Uh, but anyway, uh, he wasn't quite himself in that movie, and so in this one, you know, they definitely pay more attention to him since he didn't get that much development in the first film, and I think it really paid off. It felt almost like he stole a show in some parts, and he also has, like, one of the more, uh, funny lines in the movie. Uh, but it was really nice seeing his character progress and knowing more about him. All of the other characters are basically the same. Uh, I think that, though, I can say that Hulk, he stole a show in the first movie, but ultimately I felt like here he was a little underused, and I don't really care for the way uh, his character concluded towards the end. Also, there is kind of a formula with this movie that's the same as with Avengers that I noticed. Um, I won't say too much, but, like, basically there are parallels with with both films that are almost exactly the same. Uh, I didn't really appreciate them doing the same thing. Uh, I understand where they're coming from, story-wise, but I just, like, they could have handled that a little better or a little differently. Three new characters I really liked in this movie were Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver and Vision, especially Vi Vision, but Scarlet Witch was really cool, and I really liked the casting for all three of them. Um, so Elizabeth Olsen, she did a great job, and especially the way she kind of moved her hands to create this, you know, where the powers were coming from, and that her power set is very mysterious. You don't know how much power she has or how little power, uh, so I'm really excited to see in the future what her character is going to bring to this universe and how much we could see of what she can do. Quicksilver was cool and a lot of people are probably gonna compare him to the Quicksilver in X-Men Days of Future Past and I like them both the same actually. Uh, they're very different performances but I think both of them did a great job. Uh, so yeah I can't really say which one's better because I really like both of them. And Vision, oh he's my favorite. I really think he kind of stole the show in the movie First of all, his character design, outstanding. It really looks like he popped out of a comic book. And there's just some parts where, you know, he's flying around and I'm just like, oh, oh my god, it's a comic book movie. It really is a comic book movie. Like, I was so excited. Uh, so I really like Paul Bettany in the role. And I'm very curious to see where his character is going to go later on in the universe. So for everyone else, I like them. Uh, Captain America was good. Uh, Thor, he had some really great lines in this movie too. I think Tony Stark, the way he handled the whole Ultron situation could have been better. I feel like he wasn't truly sorry for what he did. Um, it was a very huge situation that, <laughs> that Ultron was trying to do and, and for the for Tony Stark to just kind of like shrug it off like, eh, no big deal, all right, that didn't work out, okay, fine, let's go on to the next thing. But I also do like how the characters responded to Ultron and everything and, and what happened, uh, because it was like, hey, dude, um, this ain't funny, you know, this is serious, uh, and like everyone got mad at him and was very reluctant to, you know, do any more experiments or anything with him, so... Uh, yeah, I do like the fact that the characters brought up, like, hey, this is kind of a big deal, but I just didn't like his attitude, Tony's attitude, with the whole situation. But, uh, again, like, you know, he, he really does shine, I think, Robert Downey Jr. In any any movie in, in the Marvel Universe, he, like, just steals the show every time. Captain America was good, too. Uh, and Black Widow, I liked her in this movie, but I didn't, like 
love her. I did learn a little bit more about her character and that was kind of interesting, but I just don't like the way they kind of handled the relationship with uh, her and Bruce Banner. I think it was a little, as I said again, rushed and it didn't last very long what was going on there. So I don't know what the heck went on behind the scenes, but Joss Whedon's definitely not happy. <laughs> like he seriously almost came out and like attacked the studio and everything for some of the stuff that went on behind the scenes. So I just, I think it comes off though, what was going on in the movie. Uh, I think that Avengers is a good movie to watch. It's very entertaining. Um, and I went back to see it twice. I really liked it. Uh, however, I do feel like this one wasn't as inspired as some of the other Marvel movies. Uh, maybe especially Avengers or like Captain America the Winter Soldier or Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, it just kind of felt like... Joss Whedon was obligated to make this movie, but he didn't really have any ideas, like really good ideas. Uh, there were a lot of funny dialogue moments, but um, unless maybe all of the ideas he had were cut out of the film, uh, I, I don't know. I, I just think that maybe the studio which was trying to like shoehorn in some things that needed to be said, and... Uh, that might have ruined the movie a little bit. Um, so I think it's... People are kind of mixed on this movie, and I would have to say I'm the same way. Uh, I see a lot of problems with it. There are a lot of things that work as well. Uh, the music was great. I didn't know it was Danny Elfman who uh, scored it this time, but that's cool. Uh, the action was good. I do feel like in some parts, though, it's... You could tell that it was kind of like CGI. Like, it didn't feel like it was all that finished 100%, like maybe 98% finished with the CGI. It didn't look terrible, but there are some times I could tell like when a character just like moves at a weird way. For the most part though, the CGI was okay. Although I feel like Hulk looked a little bit more cartoony than usual. Um, like he just, him blending in with the environment wasn't I think as good as the first film. So again, I really liked the movie. All the acting was really great. Uh, all of the new characters were really awesome, and I'm really excited to see what's going to happen in the future, but I just think this one did not top the first Avengers, and I don't think it'll ever top the first one, because that's the first we're introduced to the Avengers, um, and it's just like this special type of event, this special moment, you know, all of these characters coming together, and it's hard to top that, so I totally understand, and I wouldn't even say it's as good as Captain America the Winter Soldier. However, I'm going to give it the same rating as Captain America the Winter Soldier, four stars, because I don't believe that it deserves to be three and a half stars. Uh, I think that it's still like a four star film, but yeah, there are some problems, and I think what happened behind the scenes, whatever happened with Joss Whedon and the execs, is kind of shows a little bit here. Uh, it's not like a mess or anything, but as a whole, uh, the way the movie was edited, the way the story was, just did not feel like it was a one cohesive, natural timing type of film. But I really enjoyed myself, uh, and yeah! <laughs> so, uh, I'm sorry this review took longer than normal, and I'm, yeah, I'm using my new camera, and I hope you like it. <laughs> and I got a new haircut. I don't know if I'm, I kind of need to play around with it some more. But, uh, yeah, I hope the lighting didn't go as dark as I thought it, you know, as I kind of, it looks on the screen. Uh, I'm using natural light because, uh, ah, God, I've been having such a problem with my lighting. But, anywho, you don't need to hear about that right now. So, thank you so much for watching this review. Please subscribe. Remember to always keep it real. And, honestly, I probably won't get around to doing another movie review uh, for a while. I'm not sure. There isn't much coming out lately because of the Avengers. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll get around to recording uh, a review for like Jurassic World, but you can definitely count count on me doing a review for Star Wars: The Force Awakens. As you see, I got I got my Star Wars shirt on too. <laughs> I'm excited for that movie. But anyway, goodbye.